As you might have noticed on previous videos on this channel, I like 140mm fans. But what I also like is Arctic's P12 ARGB 0DB lineup. And if you now combine all of my favorite things, you will get this. The Arctic Liquid Freezer 280 ARGB. It, it's like it, it's made for me to like it. So this is Arctic's Liquid Freezer 280 ARGB and just like we did with the Liquid Freezer 360 ARGB I wanted to go over the usual features, compatibility, installation and, and the general stuff. But I also wanted to directly compare this to the original non-RGB Liquid Freezer 280. Unfortunately I do not have one but I also got a trick up my sleeve. Um, and can we just notice for a second that it really might be time for Arctic to finally release a white liquid freezer? Okay, let's start with the general stuff. This 280mm size AIO is meant for the really heavy task. With a 38mm thick radiator and two of Arctic's P14 PVM ARGB 140mm fans, it should be able to keep everything cool, even Intel's new 12th gen lineup. These P14 ARGB fans are not yet separately available at this point, but we have all the numbers. Spinning at 1900 rpm free air and roughly 1800 rpm on the radiator, these behemoths are pushing around 68.9 CFM at 2 mm of H2O. And to put this into perspective, the original LF280 non-RGB uses the normal P14 fans with 72.8 CFM at 2.4 mm of water. But before you logically assume that because every number seems to be lower, hence the original performs better, let me just stop you. The originals are spinning at 1700 RPM, which seems to be changing the results quite a bit. For the rest of the liquid freezer, it's pretty much the exact same thing as any other liquid freezer. We've got the same iconic Arctic Millennium Falcon water block pump cover, featuring the ever-present yet slightly unnecessary VRM fan. The same one cable approach to connect everything, so a single PVM to make the fan spin and a single 3-pin ARGB to make everything shine. And of course we got the two really thick 450mm long tubes, which as usual are not adjustable at the water block nor the radiator, so just keep in mind that you will not be doing any crazy bends with this thing. And I, I just stopped. In terms of compatibility, we've got solely AM4 for Team AMD, though let's be honest, if you are still using a bulldozer, then the cooler is just one of your many, many problems. For Team Blue, we've got 2011-3 and 2066, as long as the ILM is square, and every 1150 and 1200 for the usual consumers. As Intel's 12th gen just hit the market, the needed brackets are not yet included in the box, but you can contact Arctic directly and they will provide you an installation kit free of charge. Though I am pretty hard guessing that at some point in the near future it will just be in the box like anything else. Now let's go over the installation. Before we can do anything, we need to prepare the water block. So turn it around and add the two mounting clips in a outsticking orientation and screw them down using the provided screws. For Team Red, we need to remove the pre-installed black retention brackets and place the AMD spacers on top. Now we can position the AMD mounting brackets by either aligning the lower holes for the standard AM4 installation or the upper ones for the better hotspot alignment for Ryzen 3 and 5000. Just keep in mind that the bracket with the slightly edged off corners needs to be installed in the bottom and then just screw everything down. Over on Intel's side, for their 1150X, 1200 and 1700 sockets, we need to position the backplate behind the motherboard and screw it down from the front using the longest screws provided in the Intel bag. From here, for both AMD and Intel, use the included syringe of MX5 thermal paste and splash some of that thermal compound on your CPU. Then position the water block on top and screw it down using the provided bolts. Now a quick honorable mention before we proceed. As it was brought to my attention after the Liquid Freezer 360 AGB review, it seemed to be quite hard to loosen up the fans and reposition them in a pull configuration. 
This has been addressed to some degree as the pre-installed RGB and PVM connections are no longer semi-permanently attached to each other using some sort of shrinking tube. Instead, Arctic used zip ties here and there and instead of making the wire as short as humanly possible to make it stick to the radiator, they are using the screws of the fans themselves to keep them in place. And because I needed to replace these fans with the original P12 to make the comparison, I can confirm that moving the fans around seems to be a bit easier compared to the Liquid Freezer 360 ARGB. Okay, benchmark time. We've tested the Liquid Freezer 280 with both the original 140mm P14 fans and the newer P14 ARGB fans. And despite me initially believing that the 360 should be marginally better than the 280, the original non-RGB 280 outperformed it by 2 degrees C above ambient under full load. Now, as I said in the beginning, even though the ARGB numbers are lower, the fan speed seems to have an impact. In fact, it had enough of an impact to get the CPU down another degree C, which in the end produced the absolute best cooling numbers we've had so far, which makes this Arctic Liquid Freezer 280 ARGB the best performing CPU cooler at full blast that we had seen so far. That was completely unexpected. But what if we slowly turn down the fan speed? By slowly reducing the fan speed in 10% decrements, we can see that the 280 and 280 ARGB are really close to each other, basically just battling for the first spot all the way through but the ARGB version is just a tick better. And both are also a tick better than anything else. Until now, very, very, very good coolers. Both non-RGB and especially ARGB, but let's now go to the most important category, noise to performance. After normalizing our results by noise, we can see that the Liquid Freezer 280 ARGB is the only one that is even capable of reaching 42 degrees C, but as soon as we go to 43 degrees, the non-RGB 280 is capable of performing a bit quieter all the way through, while the 280 ARGB seems to be slowly aligning its noise to performance ratio on the same level as the 360 non-RGB. So all in all, where does this leave us? Generally, the LF280 ARGB is the raw performance king until now, based on what I am able to test. However, the original LF280 non-RGB is ever so slightly better in noise to performance, but the difference is so small, like I need a dB meter to hear it small, so just take a listen. Looking at all the coolers so far, these liquid freezers are just amazing. They outperform basically everything while keeping a perfect noise to performance ratio. And after today's benchmarks, even though I thought the LF360 would be the best option, the 280 ARGB changed my mind. So generally speaking, if you got a Ryzen 9, i9 or anything beneath, I do believe that 280 is the perfect spot. Not necessarily because of the price, cause I can get both a 280 RGB, non-RGB and 360 ARGB, non-RGB for roughly the same price. But it's because it's generally just easier to fit a 280 red into a case than a 360. So, mm, and I'm not even mentioning that Arctic also offers a 420 version, which I believe will be completely overkill, but... But okay, this was it for the Liquid Freezer 280 ARGB. At this point, I would like to thank Arctic for sending us over this amazing AIO, and if you want to keep watching, have a look at the Liquid Freezer 360 versus 360 ARGB video. Anyway, thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye.